How's it going guys? It's your main man JB here. In this video we're checking out this chamfer plane by Seika. I was sent this just recently. They got in touch and said well I want to check out this chamfer plane. And actually putting a chamfer on a piece of timber is what I do quite often when I'm making bits and pieces. But uh, this little thing, this little tool, is actually the exact thing that I need to put a chamfer on a bit of timber. Now you can just use a plane and that's what I normally use but with this you do get all these different shape bits so you can actually put different shapes and profiles on the end of your timber. So uh, that's pretty cool isn't it? So I was like yes please I'll have a go at that. Uh, as you can see it's all wrapped up still I haven't opened it up so uh, guess what we're going to do right now. So let's open it up then and we'll take a look at what we've got. Now you may be already familiar that Seika do some pretty cool tools and uh, if you check the above links coming up on your screen right now you will see that they have done a profile gauge and a angle protractor, a mitre saw angle protractor. So uh, yeah, go check those videos out. But here it is, here's the chamfer plane. So there we've got six cutter heads. So you can see from that, that you've got different shapes in which you can put on your bit of timber. Oh, sexy, look at that, we've got a nice little bag. That's always good. It's nice to get a little bag for these sort of things. Now guys, do not adjust your sets. The noise that you can hear is the kind of back end of Storm Eunice that we've uh, recently had. I think she's sort of been and gone already, but we've got more on the way. So uh, yeah, sorry about the noise for now, but uh, I'm sure you can hear me more than you can hear out there. So check it out check it out check it out Creek David there we go look nice little knob there that's gonna take the blade out and then this wheel here as I turn that one way and the other you should see that it's slowly moving kind of in and out so that obviously gives you a bigger deeper profile. We'll have a go with that and then we'll check out some of these other cutting heads and again if I just show you the back of that that gives you a bit of an idea of the different types of profile or cuts you can have on your timber. So we've got an instruction manual I guess it tells you everything you need to know about setting up and changing the blades and where you can contact them and any other information like that. Now I've got all sorts of timber in the workshop but uh, yeah let's use a um, bit of 2B1. Uh, what else have we got? We've got some MDF just checking that that's got a straight line yeah one end of this is straight the other end isn't see if you can see that. If we do anything we'll do it on this edge so I'll just mark that with a straight line down there so I know that that's the edge that I'm going to be using the chamfer plane on. So look, just to make this a little bit easier and it's a pretty good tip if you're planing anything just put a block I could screw it down but as I've got a clamp handy I'm going to clamp that bit of timber there and I can just push that bit up against it and that will keep it still so that's a, a pretty good idea to do that otherwise you're holding it and if it snags a bit it ends up moving and all sorts so uh, yeah give yourself a stop block now just before we start what I have noticed you might not be able to see it on camera but just in here on the cutter if I just wind it down a bit it does actually show a gauge on there. You can actually see a gauge in millimetres. 
so if I was to bring that back all the way to zero in theory as I run my piece of timber along there it's not going to hit the cutter so let's just put it down let's just put it down a couple of millimeters and uh, let's give it a go right, that's probably a bit too much because it's a bit hard to get it started but I suppose what you can do is just oh, oh wow that's actually good See if I can get this. It's a little bit tricky getting that first bit started there. Oh wow. So I cannot take any more off. That was a bit tough because it ended up taking a whole lot off in one. But look at that. So it's angled it at the front there and all the way along absolutely perfectly. Look at that for a chamfer. There we go. Now it's got it. Cool, it's suddenly gone from nothing to, to loads. Again, just at the start here. But I'll tell you what, once you've got that going, that is really good because it looked like I was struggling and bits were coming up and off of it, but it's taken more off but look at how smooth that is and it has given us a slight radius you can see there there is a radius on it as opposed to a straight chamfer but that feels really nice that is that is quite impressive so far so good I'm impressed with that that's really finished it nicely all right it's a tiny tiny bit bumpy there only a tiny bit you can only notice it when you feel it you can't see it but apart from that that is spot on right let's change the blade and try something else the allen key is only to remove this guide here so we don't actually need this to change the blade all we need to do is undo this knob here turn this and if we continue to turn it so we're pushing the blade further and further out it eventually drops out and you can see there it's got a threaded end and that's basically how it moves in and out of the plane and then you're just using this to tighten it off so let's put that down there and just show you the different blades that you get in this set there we go I'm not going to give a demonstration of all of these because you get a pretty good idea what they do but they can give you some, uh, well these ones particularly, give you some sort of fancy mouldings on the end of your timber so um, I think we should give something like this a go and uh, you've got the gauge on the side there so as long as you can see it in this window that kind of gives you an idea which way to put it in. If I then turn it up like so and turn this the blade just goes in. So actually changing the blade is super super easy. Let's put that down to about, I'm just going to go for one millimetre on that to start with. It's just over a millimetre, about 1.5. So let's have a go on our bit of timber again. And uh, here we go. Okay, so I've just taken a tiny little bit off there. Not a lot at all. So we'll loosen it and we'll wind it out a bit further. There we go. Now we're now we're starting to cut into it a bit. Uh, here we go. Ah, oh, now that's got it. great thing about this is you can't go too much so you can only go as far as the tool is actually set which is great so at the moment it's just rebating it if you can see there it's just putting a rebate in it which is actually quite good because this is quite a nice look when you're putting two bits of wood together like this for example and you don't really want to see the join 
so by putting a rebate in one of them it kind of gives you this nice almost tongue and groove look where the boards are not quite joined all the way together but they look like they are if that makes sense so shall we go a little bit further with this come on so there we go look look at the size of that come off there doing 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 so yeah that's just going to look really nice when it's joined up with another bit of wood there you go so that that one that looks like I just remember the film yeah I was outside but I weren't the only one you will tell me who else Boosh, Mr. Handman. There you go. <laughs> just thought I'd chuck that in. I'm not going mad at all. Although I have just eaten three pepper pig sweets. Okie dokie. Let's just go for the straight bit. There we go. Drop that in. Turn it. And then it just drops into place. Let's go about a mil and a half. Pop that in there. There we go. So this is the sort of thing I achieve when I use a hand plane. If I just want to take the edge off it, I'll just run the plane along it a couple of times. But again, if I was going to do both sides and I want them exactly the same, I've got to kind of look at it and check. Whereas this will only go so far. There we go. So that's put a tiny chamfer on there. I'm going to go even more. It's taking a big chunk off there and look at that check that out there we go look nice flat chamfer uh, I think one of the issues is is that all your shavings get stuck up in here so it's going to be really important that after every time you've done a pass you probably need to pull those out. Let's try this on a piece of MDF, shall we? I guess you could almost turn it on its side like this. I don't see why not. But I need to wind that blade out a bit more. And there we go, same on a bit of MDF. Nice chamfer. I think these do need sharpening. It does say something on the packaging about um, during use they'll need sharpening. So um, I probably want to be quite careful sharpening them, but that's pretty good. I'd still go over that with a bit of paper before I was to paint it or whatever, but uh, that's cool. There we go, let's just use this smaller bit here. It's already got a bit of a radius on it. And I'm going to use this bit to give it more. What I'm also wondering is, can I turn it round that way and finish it off that way too? Ah, see this one has got a bit of a a lip to it right here so if I go a little bit deeper again just like that there you can actually really see it on this bit so it's leaving a tiny lip here and a tiny lip here but giving you, I won't show you that end because you can't really see it, but it's giving you this rounded edge right here. That is pretty cool. I like that. So that would be kind of like real detailing on a worktop or something. Well, I think we've seen enough of that already. You get the uh, general idea. And what do I think of this then? 
Well, I think it's a really good idea. This is definitely going in the van. It's going in my toolbox. But I'm probably going to stick with a flat bit and a radius bit. Because that's really all I'd do. If I was going to put this type of profile on a piece of timber like this, I would end up using, haven't got them with me right now, must be in a van, but I would use a router bit for something like that. It would be a, a lot more effective. Uh, it would be a whole lot easier as well. But I'll tell you what, if you're somewhere where you've got no power, you haven't got a router, then <laughs> this is definitely your answer. This is your answer for doing chamfers on edges, radiuses on edges, and also detailed profiles on edges, if you haven't got a router already, or a plane. So there you go, another really useful tool from Seika. Well, thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you found this video helpful and interesting and what have you. So uh, if so, give us a thumbs up. That would be awesome. And while you're at it, if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe right now. That will be fantastic. No doubt I'll be posting some pictures on Instagram when I'm using this tool, so don't forget to follow me there and check those out in due course. And you never know, I might do some other YouTube video at some point in the future where I'll be using that as well. So uh, thanks, Saker. Nice one. I will definitely be using it, and you guys will be seeing more of this, no doubt. Nice one, guys. See you on the next video.